hello booktube and it's a drastic change of location not only am i out of bed but i'm on my feet on a step stool <laughs> i'm feeling better and i thought we'd do another bookshelf tour in the apparently endless attempt of mine to get one bookshelf filmed <laughs> and i figured finally i figured out the way to do this is simply to hold the camera as, and film myself doing it there's no other way there's no, you're not going to use it as, as any kind of a documentary film uh, so we're going to see how this goes. And if it goes well, then we'll just work our way down on this book. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to hold this in one hand, and I'm going to show you the books as we go through them on this one shelf. Uh, I am feeling much better. I am freshly shaved, freshly showered, freshly uh, hair trimmed and whatnot. So uh, I'm ready to go. The first book is uh, a biography of Erasmus. My beloved Erasmus is by Preserved Smith. Uh, it's a big, thick thing from about 100 years ago that I just love the the... The eloquence of it makes up for me, in my mind, the eloquence makes up for uh, the lack of up-to-date research at any time, especially since the bulk of Erasmus's life is known. Uh, and then underneath that, uh, sort of piled sideways on these shelves, is <laughs> is uh, A.F. Pollard's biography of Henry VIII, which is wonderful. It's extremely eloquent. Same thing with the Preserved Smith. What it lacks in up-to-date research, it makes up for in writing. Uh, <laughs> and it had the... The, that is the back cover, and that is what the front cover looked like. Just this horrible, inept, off-color crap of a cover. So I made my own years ago. I made my own <laughs> cover of just eight with his horrible novel and face. <laughs> so there you go, as if you had any doubts that I was a book geek. Uh, and then the first book proper on the shelf that isn't piled sideways is Reiner Stock, who I've mentioned on this channel before. This is the decisive years. There's young, super hottie, Franz Kafka. Uh, and then the Yale paperback of Leo Damrosch's biography of Jonathan Swift, uh, which has... A very nice blurb <laughs> uh, from Open Letters Monthly <laughs> will surely be the definitive one volume Swift biography of our time. Very nice, very sexy blurb. <laughs> uh, then we've got a classic, something I've mentioned on this channel here before Paul Revere and the World He Lived In by Esther Forbes. That great Grant Smith cover of him riding through the towns at night. Uh, and then the next one is something that, uh, it's a book guild book. I wish I had a, a hardcover of this in proper condition. This is Byron the Maker uh, by Anne Fleming, a biography of, of Lord Byron that is, I think, a compilation of two volumes. It didn't read that way. It read like one. It's a really good biography of Byron. For some reason, not only do I not have a, a proper hardcover of it, but it's also not with my other Byron biographies. This biography bookshelf is... It's, it's turning up mysteries as we go on. <laughs> well, that wasn't part of the plan. Uh, the next one is The Tyranny and Fall of Edward II. You can see this there by Natalie Fried. This is a, just, it's a, not really a soup to nuts biography. It's more a study of his reign. But since we know almost nothing definitive individual about his childhood or adolescence, it's, it amounts to the same thing. Uh, and then this thing, this is a lovely thing. Uh, this is Love Fiercely. Uh, by Jean Zimmerman. This is uh, it's a it's a very strange little love story about the two people who are immortalized in a John Singer Sargent portrait. Uh, she's holding her boater hat right in the right spot. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a lovely meditation. It really made me think uh, uh, of how many such books could be written about the people who are immortalized in uh, Sargent's in Sargent's portraits. Uh, and if I remember. I will leave a link down below to my review of it. <laughs> and if I don't remember to do that, please remind me. <laughs> uh, the next one is a comparatively new book. This is a biography of Confucius. This is by uh, Michael Schumann, and I thought it was fantastic. Just, it, I mean, it's a short thing, but it's it, the, the strength of it lies mainly in how good he is in just thinking about the subject rather than giving us what little we know. Uh, then Theo Arison, I think I've mentioned him before, a great writer on uh, 20th century royalty, especially the House of Windsor. Uh, and this is his royal family, Years of Transition, uh, which is uh, directly about the subject that is also the subject of the new series on Netflix, The Crown, uh, which is the, the young girl had an accession to the throne of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, then uh, next is a book you will remember from Olive, a book Olive's channel. <laughs> I'm a big fan too. This is uh, Robert Massey's biography of Catherine the Great. Uh, it's a big, thick 
beautiful thing that takes a point of reminding us that Catherine the Great was a, a powerful, enlightened ruler, not just the subject of a whole bunch of libidinous rumors. And I thought it was amazing for that, but I also thought it was amazing because you, he was he wrote it this this whip smart, great, crackling read at an age when most biographers and historians are long since retired. That <laughs> gives hope to the, <laughs> to some of us of a certain demographic. Uh, then we have two more transverse books. This is the Reign of King Stephen, uh, which is. Uh, how I like to think of booktube. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, it's got the great Gustav Dory uh, Crusades illustration on the cover, and it's it's by David Crouch, and it's just, what it says is just a, a study of King Stephen's reign. Uh, Ill-fortuned, but and also as a result, ill-studied, but I, I think it's fascinating. Uh, and then we have Hostage to Fortune. This is the life of Francis Bacon. Uh, and this is by Lisa Jardine, who's famous, and Alan Stewart, who's slightly less so. They're both really good popular historians. That's just a big, thick thing. I don't know why I don't have this in hardcover. It's, uh, uh, because uh, Francis Bacon fascinates me. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> uh, God knows what the what the uh, the camera's autofocus is going to do with this bouncing all around. I hope this doesn't give you uh, motion sickness. Uh, then we have Graven with Diamonds. This is a, uh, by uh, Nicola, Nicola Schulman. This is a biography of uh, Thomas Wyatt from the court of King Henry VIII, a figure that I think is just fascinating. And uh, this is a, a book really does him justice. Uh, and then we have uh, William Anderson's Dante the Maker, uh, an old and somewhat thematic study of, of Dante, not really, a, I mean, it is a biography, but it, it's, it mainly looks at him through his works and is just thrilling as, as that. The better you know the works of Dante, the better you'll like it. And then we have a, a two volume uh, set here. Let me see if I can show you these. These are uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge by Richard Holmes. This is, uh, volume one is Early Visions, when he was a, a super hottie, uh, before he became an addict. And then uh, on two is Darker Reflections, when he couldn't put a solid thought together. Uh, and they, they read wonderfully together, but he's, Holmes is a fantastic writer, and, and Coleridge is an infinitely interesting study. Most people would stop here. They would stop at the first volume. Holmes is a genius, so he, he finds plenty to write about in the whole life, not just the productive part. Uh, and then we have uh, a, a classic. <laughs> it's not really a biography. Uh, so again, I don't know what it's doing on this shelf. It's Anthony Trollope, A Commentary by Michael Sadler, uh, which is not so much a biography as just Sadler doing an amble through Trollope's enormous call, uh, body of work and talking about it. It's just... You know, I should get this out of here, though, because it's not a bar. Uh, it's just endlessly fascinating if you love Trollope's work, which I do. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, by Mrs. Stepney Rawson. And the way that you know that it's a very old book is because she's Mrs. Stepney Rawson rather than having the first name of her own. <laughs> and this is her biography of Bess of Hardwick. And uh, this is notable in my book collection as being the only thing I have that has a Moody's Library sticker. <laughs> Katie from Books and Things will be the only person who knows what that is, and I was thrilled when I saw it. Uh, then we have this. This is uh, uh, Leon E. Halkin. This is Erasmus, a critical biography, uh, which, again, uh, much like the, uh, the Dante the Maker, it looks at Erasmus through his works rather than just a, a straight-up biography. Then we have uh, something I mentioned on this channel many times before, Stacey Schiff's biography of Cleopatra. Great, fantastic book. This is the American hardcover. Then uh, one of my handful of books on Julius Caesar that I just, the, he, he sometimes brings out the best in biographers, and this one is called Always I Am Caesar by w, w. Jeffrey Tatum. It's a, a thin thing, just a study of Shakespeare's personality and his, uh, and his political life that just jumps off the page. So I, uh, I have had many, many Caesar biographies. This is one that I like to keep. And then, oh, this one has a place in my heart. This is Sophia by Anita Anand. This is it's subtitled Princess, Suffragette, and Revolutionary. It's a, a descendant of the, of the great uh, Indian rulers <laughs> uh, and once possessor of the, of the, the jewel in the crown, the gigantic diamond that her uh, descendants have fruitlessly tried to get back from the British crown. Uh, this is a biography of her that is, has something absolutely 
worthy of Henry Fielding on virtually every page. I uh, would never have known about it, but an editor of mine actually asked me to review it. And so I, I went and got the book and read it and loved it and reviewed it. I will try to remember to leave a link down below to my review, but I cannot recommend the book highly enough. Uh, then we have this. This is uh, the big Penguin classic, uh, Penguin Illustrated Edition of Leonard Clark's uh, biography and, and artistic study of Leonardo da Vinci, uh, which is, again, not strictly a biography, but it has all the facts we know about da Vinci. But Clark is never better than when he gives himself a strict subject and just analyzes the heck out of it. And then the last thing, C.P. Snow, the great, the great uh, neglected writer, C.P. Snow, did a book on Trollope. He did a, an illustrated biography that's really just a friendly trot through Trollope's life. Uh, and uh, it's, it's surprisingly meaty for all that. I, I, I've enjoyed it more than I have most actual biographies of Trollope that I've read. Uh, and I've read them all, as well as will not surprise you. <laughs> uh, and there you have it. That is... Uh, that is that one book. This is the top bookshelf of the main biography bookcase. <laughs> so, so I've got a long way to go. <laughs> but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop now and see how this came out. I'm hoping it's good enough to, to post, and maybe you'll, uh, you'll bear with me as I get better at this. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you soon, book two. Thank you.